Hi everyone, today's lesson is all about the second law of thermodynamics and how we solve to predict if it's a spontaneous process or not. So before you start this video, make sure that you have watched the previous videos about enthalpy and entropy, especially the entropy video, since it explains how entropy and spontaneity are um, work. Uh, how both works hand in hand. So, um, these tidbits from your module, um, it starts with um, the second law of thermodynamics. So, processes in which disorder increases are favored to occur spontaneously. This is what we've discussed in our um, previous video about entropy. So this is the basis of the second law of thermodynamics in predicting the spontaneity of the process. So the second law of thermodynamics, its main purpose is to predict the spontaneity of a process. It tells us if the process is spontaneous or not. So the law expresses the relationship between the spontaneity and entropy. Okay, so the second law of thermodynamics states that natural processes proceed in the direction that maintains or increases the total entropy of the universe. So if you recall, the entropy doesn't require energy. So it's a spontaneous process. It doesn't require energy for the conversion or reaction to happen. So um, we're referring here in the second law of thermodynamics for the total entropy of the universe. So and in spontaneity change, there is a net increase in entropy. And this will all be later um, explained or illustrated by solving the um, examples later on. So if you recall, the universe consists of two parts. So we have a universe, right? So it has two parts. So it's called the system and surroundings. So it makes sense that entropy, entropy change of the universe is the sum of the surroundings and the system. So we have the system inside the surrounding and the surrounding and the system inside the universe so um, it is it is understandable that the universe consists of the sum of the surrounding and the system so um, we have this formula to um, illustrate this the change in the entropy of universe is equal to the change of the entropy of the system plus the change of the entropy of the surroundings. So, under standard conditions, it's written as this. With the um, degree, degree sign as a superscript. So, such that um, the entropy change in universe should be positive. To be a spontaneous process so in solving for the um, entropy change of the universe in standard conditions it should be positive for us to um, determine if it's a spontaneous process or not so it, it, it heavily relies on the sign if it's positive or negative spontaneous or non-spontaneous so the first example here is to calculate the entropy change of the univ of the for the following reactions. So so reaction at 25 degrees Celsius meaning it's in standard state. So we have CO2 I mean carbon monoxide gas plus hydrogen gas um, should produce CH3OH in liquid form. We have put L here. So it's from gas to liquid process. So the given standard entropy for the reactants and product, we have this given here, joules per mole to Kelvin. So the first approach we should, um, um, the step one in solving for the entropy change, standard entropy change of the universe is to first, the step one, I'm going to write this down. The step one is to solve for the standard um, standard entropy change of the system. 
And we know this already because this is how we say, solve for the standard change of entropy. In this case, we only have the system as the subscript. So the entropy change we solved in the previous video is, is equivalent to solving for the change, entropy change, standard entropy change for the system. So we have this one. to the summation of the y from um, no F products minus So for the product side, we only have CH3OH. So we have one mole of it times its entropy change of 127.2 joules per mole Kelvin minus the reactants. Summation of the reactants, we have one mole of C carbon monoxide, CO times its um, standard entropy change we have i mean standard entropy we have 97.7 .7 joule per mole kelvin plus the second component of the reactant we have two moles of hydrogen gas with times its entropy change standard entropy 130.7 joule per mole Open. So we cancel out moles, so we will be left with joule per Kelvin. Then overall we have 127.2 joule per Kelvin minus 459.1 joule per Kelvin. And this is clearly a negative negative 331.9 joule per kelvin and now we can say that the entropy um, standard entropy change of the system is non-spontaneous but this is not what we need we're looking for the standard entropy change of the universe this is only for the system okay so the next one we should solve is um if you recall this one from your module or from the previous lesson to solve for the um, I'm just going to insert this here this is note recall recall that standard change of surroundings is equal to the Enthalpy change of the system. We have H here, standard enthalpy change of the system divided by the temperature. Right? So the second step, since this the, since the numerator, the enthalpy change of the system is not given, we have to solve for this first. So the step two for this problem solving is solve for enthal standard enthalpy change of the system. So how do we solve for that? If you recall again, if you watch the enthalpy change video, we have, or even read your module, we have standard enthalpy change of formation in the system is equivalent to the summation of y standard enthalpy change formation for products this is quite similar to the entropy one minus standard i mean summation of z standard enthalpy change formation of reactants reactants so the values for this 
the enthalpy should be given in the problem. And I just noticed that I forgot to write the given, so I'm just going to write this given now. Okay, so the given from the problem is actually COG. This is for the enthalpy change. We have carbon monoxide. We have negative 110.5 kJ per mole. And H2. Yes, this is zero. So if you recall that this is a stable state. Please do watch the previous video why this one is stable. It's in mo in most stable form. That's why the enthalpy change is zero since it's, since it's in standard state. And then we have CH3OH. And we have negative 238.4 kJ per mole. So that's the given. Now we can solve for the second step, the standard enthalpy change for the system. So we have, for the product, we only have one product. We have one mole of CH3OH times its standard enthalpy, which is 127.2. Mm, I know. It's actually negative... 238.4 kJ per mole from the given here. Minus the mole of the reactants. We have we have two reactants here, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. We have one mole of scar carbon monoxide and multiplied by 110.5 enthalpy change kJ per mole plus two mole of um, hydrogen gas and that is stable. So the standard, I mean the entropy, enthalpy change is zero. Now we simply have negative 238.4 kilojoule minus negative 110.5 kilojoule okay so we have a negative 127.9 kilojoule for the standard enthalpy change of the system but the third step is Three is to solve for the surroundings standard entropy change of surroundings since we have uh, so solve for this is solve for. Since we have this enthalpy change in the system, we can solve this one. We simply divided it by the temperature. So we have, I'm just going to write the formula again. So we have um, negative of the system, enthalpy formation system divided by the temperature and note that we have the standard it's in standard state we have the degrees um, symbol in the superscript so we have negative negative 127.9 kilojoule divided by it's um, 25 degrees celsius is equal to 298 kelvin So we have 298 Kelvin, right? So now we have, um, we cannot solve this one 
without converting kilojoule to joule, we know that 1 kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. So this is, um, this should be, um, if we divide this first, we will get um, 0 0.0, 0 no, it's 0 0.4292 kilojoule per Kelvin. Note that this is small letter K. Small letter K. Kelvin, be careful on, um, on writing your units. We have 1000 joule per 1 kilojoule. So we cancel the kilojoule out, multiplied by 1000. We have 429.2 joule per Kelvin. So we do not stop here since the sec the fourth step is to solve for the standard entropy change of the universe. And from our notes, we know that the standard entropy change of universe is equal to the system plus the surroundings. So we have this one. System plus standard entropy change of the surroundings. Therefore, this is negative 331.9 joule per Kelvin plus 4 9.2 joule per Kelvin. Now we have this universe is 97.3 joule per Kelvin. So this one is a positive. And a positive um, entropy change means that a process is spontaneous and that's how you solve it thank you